Our continuation of security matters here is uh, time for us to look at uh, Lagos specifically. We've not been joined by Fatai Wishana. He's a commissioner of police at Lagos State. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Let's start with uh, what uh, Mr. Onik Banjo did uh, uh, point out uh, while he was uh, with us a while ago on the very unfortunate incident that occurred in Ujwelegba uh, concerning the truck that overturned from the bridge. Uh, uh, his question is uh, there hasn't been any kind of arrest or prosecution uh, at the moment. Uh, apparently I followed that program. Um, I want to tell uh, Lagosians and Nigerians that that suspect was charged to court on Friday and we made it a press... Um, Friday last week. Friday last week. Um, and we, we also gave this information to the press. And as I'm sitting down here now, I can tell you that the owner of the truck um, is also in custody. He was uh, arrested on Saturday. What are the charges against him? Um, the whole lot of things. Um, contravention of uh, traffic laws and, of course, um, manslaughter of those victims. Mm. Okay. And as a follow-up, um, in order to ensure that we prevent such things again, that same, um, on Thursday, I, I met with um, NATO, the National Association of Road Transport Owners, um, NURCW, RCAN, um, the concessionaire uh, at the port, the freight owners and all the stakeholders involved to look at ways uh, that, uh, of preventing such things happening again. But what, what would you say, because one would think that there has been an investigation of this matter for us to reach the conclusion of manslaughter and not just the fact that an accident occurred, because uh, some people would say that perhaps I think we were speaking with the road safety personnel and they said that uh, that was not an unlatched container. The container was actually latched to the bed of the truck. What exactly did you find went wrong that, that, ac that made that accident occur? For all accident cases yes. where lives are lost, you go to court charging for murder. And we ensure that our legal department look at the case file before they went to court. And with regards to latching, that is why one of the reasons we, we met with the stakeholders who had said it's not just about latching, uh, that the best way to prevent such thing is to twist lock the container on the truck. And we looked at other measures that we can employ that rather than allowing those trucks to even get on the road at all, they arrive from the port in collaboration with the port and the stakeholders that we won't even allow those trucks that are carrying containers that are not twist locked to get out of the port. Mm -hmm. That is one of um, the measures we, we've discussed. And also looking at um, all the trucks have um, tonnage or whatever as to um, what they can carry to ensure that um, we look at the size of the truck um, as against the tonnage of, of the container that the truck is carrying. Do we have the equipment to do that? Do you think you'll be hamstrung with equipment issues? Uh, that is not the work of the police. That is why we are talking of collaborating with um, the stakeholders, the port authority and the concessionaire. There are supposed to be way bridges inside the port with which they will check that. And of course in Nigeria, because everybody wants to maximize profit, you have someone that bought a truck six years ago who probably was using that truck six years ago when the truck was new to carry containers that is like 40 kg and the truck is six years is uses, using that same truck to carry a container that is uh, 60 kg because all these things are not checked so it's um, a joint effort talking, to, uh, serious. talking about checking things and ensuring that they stay in line in, in line with the laws the last case we had said something, and you, yes, you answered one of his questions, but you said something about commitment to investigations, to see the matter to the end. Is that the situation? Because one would, there are those who think that the police in Lagos, for instance, doesn't really follow through on matters. There are matters spending, and then some others keep coming up. You can't stop cases from coming up. 
Yes, you can't. And of course, if you've been following the Inspector General of Police, that is why we are now emphasizing uh, intelligence-led investigation, that you don't arrest suspect and now start um, shopping for evidence. It, if diligent investigation wasn't carried out, we wouldn't know, because there's a section of that law that says, oh, owners um, can also be held. Is in the course of investigation, looking at the laws on that offense, that we discover that we can arrest the owners. In some cases, we can even arrest um, whoever that, is, uh, that has loaded that container. So all those things we're looking for, and uh, we ensure that this is investigated to logical conclusion. Just immediately after the elections, uh, we uh, did a report uh, following uh, some other communities around in Lagos. Specifically, we were around Oshodi, and it would seem as if uh, some of uh, the miscreants uh, that have been cleared before from that area of Lagos uh, have returned. Uh, what is the command doing uh, in terms of protection of lives and property, especially those Lagosians who stay very late uh, in traffic in Lagos? The whole lot of efforts um, have been put in place. Um, if I start with Oshodi, we've been making some good arrests at Oshodi. And of course, you would notice, I, I, I was personally there about two occasions, that I have police presence. And uh, one of the things I mentioned when I took over is that I would concentrate more on prevention and see how we can increase police visibility. So in all those areas, we've tried as much as possible to put more policemen on the road so that um, motorists will see them. And um, we've been collaborating with people that um, do their businesses in the areas as well to say that, look, when these boys rob, they run into the motor parks. So we've spoken with the NURTW in Oshodi. They are working with us. Uh, but what you should also know is that some of these things, like um, the traffic gridlock in Lagos, because of the number of vehicles you have on the road, just mere um, tire, whatever, that somebody's tire got bad on the road and is parking, would have a ripple effect of traffic building up. Just mere shouting at each other on traffic, because most of the guys, the, the motorists are not disciplined. Just mere violation of um, lane, uh, use of lane, we are not lane disciplined, would uh, have a ripple effect of uh, traffic building up. And that is why we've uh, more or less made um, the, the police presence permanent on those areas where we have these things uh, rampant. But the, uh, you look at the third mainland bridge too. The same thing. Someone just tweeted that he or she was robbed along that area at Adinidi this morning. Um, that would be one isolated case, but I can tell you that for the past one week, I've not recorded any, because most of them don't go to the police station. They tweet or they send WhatsApp, and they send to me. And um, some people that have been victims or would be victims would testify that um, we immediately respond. In some of the cases, I uh, respond personally uh, to be there. But what about the issues of gangs, in acti gang activities in places like Ibutemeta, Moshi, and all of that? What's the police doing about that? The police has done a lot, and that is why you've not had so many. Um, them coming up to kill people. Everyone knows, of, of course, those of us in this industry, we're in September. There is one of the cult group that has a particular date in September when they celebrate whatever they celebrate and they kill. That date has passed and nobody heard of anything. It's because we were proactive and we checked them. Another cult group has a date in August, where they normally do all whatever they do. And of course, that date also passed without people hearing anything. Where they um, do a quick operation, the police has 
always uh, responded swiftly. Are, I you, have, are you engaging them in terms of like dialogue or are you, um, how would I put it now? Are you using dialogue, the stick and carrot approach? Or are you using just a stick approach? I want to engage in dialogue with cultists. I want to engage in dialogue with gangsters. But I engage in dialogue with the community to partner with us, to let us know where they keep their weapons. Um, I, I will cite an example, um, Evans Square, where we know that they used to operate from. We have taken over that place. We've spoken to the people in the area, and they told us that oh, every evening these boys come here, they smoke in their hemp, they do all sorts of things. I'm happy we're talking about the people. Very quickly, let me bring the people, citizen relationship with the police in, in the state. How, how, how cordial is that? For now, it's been excellent. I must thank, thank, uh, thank people in Lagos that since I got into this state, I've had good responses. My telephone is full of um, SMS. Um, people call me because they know that I'll pick my, my, my Can calls. Can Lagosians uh, off the cuffs now say police uh, is our friend? I, I would th think so, but I would also encourage you to go out all day. If I bring my telephone, I will show you a whole lot of SMS messages, either thanking for quick response or responding to someone I had mentioned it before, who sent me SMS to say that some guys used to be um, uh, on Constain, uh, Constain Bridge. And um, the, the following day, I sent him a text. What's the situation? He said, thank you, sir. I've, I've not been seen them. And of course, the guys were hand robbers.